Hey guys, finally got out to do another camp. First time in almost a year now, so I've uh, really been looking forward to this. The weather's perfect at the minute, it's quite bright and sunny, but it's not too hot. So uh, hopefully it's gonna be a good night. Tell you what, for 20 pound, back in 2015, I'm using this six years now and it's held out pretty well. I haven't had any repairs needed doing, no damage to it or anything, no rips or tears, touch wood. There's the tent set up. Quite hungry now, so I think dinner's next on the list. Put a ground sheet down just so I've got a little uh, kind of clean working area to put my gear on and then I bought the little folding stool and stick table as well just a bit of a extra comfort there. Got a bigger better rucksack now kind of military Bergen second hand it's been used but it's in fantastic condition I mean these things are built to last very thick and sturdy. And then up here I've just got a few extra things hanging, got a jumper just in case it gets chilly later on in the night. And I've got some webbing there with a water bottle and knife and a saw on just so if I will go for a wander I can quickly put that on and I've got anything with me that I'll need. Got four litres of water with me for the night, I think that should be enough really uh, to drink and then a little bit to wash with. Got some one litre in a canteen there to go on my belt. I've got two litres in here, which is a handy thing to just throw over your shoulder. And then I've got another litre in with my Yugoslavian mess kit, which is what I'll be cooking in. Because in there you've got the mess kit and then that opens up and you've got a litre of water there. In the tent here I've got an inflatable mattress, sleeping bag and then an old pillow that I cut in half and sewed up. I bought a 24 hour ration pack with me, I'm probably not going to eat it all but I thought I'd test it out anyway and see what's in here, we'll go through it all in I'm not going to eat it all probably. Um, there's some quite interesting stuff in here really, so that'd be quite fun to test out. Alright this is the pack here, let's see what we've got, we've got uh, chicken, chickpeas and rice, vegetarian all day breakfast, some Moroccan style bean stew, got some barbecue peanuts, vacuum sealed, uh, currants, raisins, sultanas, basically fruit mix there, nice, um, coca-cola bottles, the sweets, guess to give you a bit of extra sugary energy, um, some Tabasco sauce, nice, uh, some tissue papers, what's here, cheddar cheese spread, a little kind of seed bar, looks quite nice. Uh, some strawberry, I don't know what that is, some kind of gel drink I guess, um, strawberry drink. Hot chocolate, 
uh, orange flavoured hot chocolate. I'm not keen on chocolate orange, but in a pinch that'll do. Uh, I got here grapefruit flavoured drink powder, tropical flavoured drink powder, just some sugary drinks. Uh, another energy drink, an orange energy drink powder. Apple turnover, nice. And some brownies, biscuits. Hmm, most of this seems pretty nice actually. Looking forward to this. And uh, then in here I've just got some tea bags and things, coffee, a little plastic spoon. I'll leave a link in the description to where I got all this from if anyone wants to take a look. Here have got a plastic spork there, uh, chewing gum, mm -hmm. well, kind of handy actually, having some chewing gum, that can be nice. Water purification tablets, nice. Tea bags. And a handy thing with, if you ever stay in hotels, they always have these, so grab them, they're handy to take camping with you. Sometimes on the websites for these companies, they will give away free samples, so if you keep an eye on them, you can get them there, you know, handy to put in your pack. But this all came with this um, 24 hour ration pack I bought, but like I say, you can get these samples from hotels and from the websites for the, for the uh, companies. Some coffees there, sugars and sweeteners and things. What are these? Uh, some antibacterial wipes, handy, and some matches there as well, and a strip. So yeah, you've got quite a bit there. I mean, obviously you don't have it doesn't come with a stove and that, but it's quite handy that it comes with water purification tablets and the matches even, and a spork. So really, all you need is the stove and fuel. Just clear a bit of ground to put the stove on. Got this little folding trowel from Poundland years ago and I got two of them I wish I'd bought more because they haven't had them in there now for years but it's, it's so useful and for a pound I mean fantastic I'm sure most of you will have seen me use this canteen before it's a Yugoslavian mess kit you've got a plastic pot on top to put your food into to eat out of a litre bottle in the middle there and then the metal pot on the bottom to cook with. Really handy set, fits in a pack really nicely because of the square shape of it. Put the stove together now. Now to cook with today, I've brought some of these Fire Dragon, which is a kind of solid fuel tablet, and I've never used these before, so uh, I'm going to give them a go, see how well they work. I've seen some good things said about them online. You can see it's basically this kind of hard gel that burns. As I say, never used these before, so no idea how they're going to work. I'm going to have the chicken gel freezy with the chickpeas and rice. See what that's like. I've squeezed all the food down to the bottom of the bag so it's all submerged in the water to hopefully heat it through and I'll kind of squidge it around a bit in a bit too once it's warmed up just make sure that it's cooked through properly. Well the gel capsule is burnt out and the water is lukewarm so that's no good. I've got five more of those capsules but I'm going to burn through them pretty quickly. I probably need to use all of them to get this going. Maybe the stove's a bit too big for it like I said, I've never used these before so maybe I'm just not using them correctly but luckily, because I'd never used them before, I have come prepared. So I do have my gas stove with me as a backup, because I didn't want to rely on those gel things. That's a good job I didn't.
All right, it's about done. I'm going to save the water that's in there for tomorrow to cook my breakfast and leave the food in the pouch there, but put it into this plastic container that comes with my Yugoslavian mess kit and then use that to eat out of because that saves me dirtying up the pot so I can reuse it without having to wash it. I'm not going to waste any water then. Like I say, I save that water as well for tomorrow for cooking breakfast. Try the chicken gel freezy. That's really nice. Looking forward to my apple turnover after this as well. Right, now let's see what the apple turnover's like. This looks quite nice. It's an uh, oxygen thing uh, stuck into it, but... Hmm. Yeah, that's uh, very nice. Not quite as much apple in it as I would like, but still very nice. half eight now and uh, starting to get dark already we're at the start of August when I'm filming this and uh, yeah it's the first time I've been out this year really it's been a funny year though um, in the UK at least where I live we've pretty much had an eternal winter <laughs> it's just never-ending winter we get maybe a week of Sun here and there and then it's back to wind grey skies even a bit chilly um, it still doesn't really feel like summer's kicked in and I mean, I always find January through March quite a dull time of year anyway. It's quite boring, uh, the weather's terrible, you know, there's not much going on. But especially when there's a lockdown like this year. And so I was desperate for winter to end and summer to kick in, and it just didn't. <laughs> last year, we had a beautiful summer, it was perfect for a lockdown last year. Um, April onwards was really gorgeous here, but um, now this year it's just been nothing but grey skies and wind. And the wind's the main problem because it just messes up the audio. If I try and film in the wind, it's just, all you can hear is uh, so that's been partly why I haven't been out filming really. And when it's dull as well, it's also hard on the camera uh, to, to get sort of decent shots because everything's just a bit grey and either too dull or sometimes um, too overexposed because of the the grey sky can actually kind of reflect the sun a bit um, and cause problems with that. And I, because I, I personally hate grey skies, I like my videos to be filmed in the sun. So when I watch them back myself, I can kind of enjoy seeing myself on a beautiful summer's day. It's just been a funny year in general for me. Uh, I don't know if anyone else has had this. Um, I guess a, a big part of it is just the whole lockdown situation. Um, last year, actually, I was kind of in my element initially, you know, and it was like emergency stations. Uh, and then the first couple of months of a lockdown I think were actually quite nice for everyone to just take a break from the rat race, relax, get to enjoy your own company again, pursue hobbies, you know, connect with family or whatever. Um, but obviously after a, a few too many months it gets very isolating and not to mention the knock-on effects of the economy and all that. Uh, but yeah, and this year in particular, last year I really enjoyed myself actually in lockdown. But this year, yeah, it's um, been a funny one. And I think it's in no small part because of the weather. Also because like everything just feels like limbo at the minute for me. I don't know if anyone else has felt this as well this year. It's not really emergency stations anymore. You know, it's been the vaccine rollout and you know, enough people have been either vaccinated or had the virus that surely we're at herd immunity now and some things are open but some things aren't and so it's you know life's not quite getting started again it's just a sort of but not quite 
and uh, on top of winter <laughs> never ending and we you know have a little bit of summer oh but not quite and then it's back to winter it's just this thing of limbo that I've been in this year um a very strange year you think last year would have been the worst year because that was when the you know the pandemic hit and all that but like I say I actually quite enjoyed <laughs> had a lot of fun last year um but yeah this year has been the hard one for me personally um just all feels a bit strange really I also feel like there was a good sense of togetherness last year. Initially, everyone kind of came together, we're all in it together, uh, but gradually that has splintered. And, you know, if anything, I think society is more fractured now than ever, even though I try to keep out of it, really, in my own little world. Um, I think maybe partly because of lockdown, I, I sort of, I think we all ended up exposing ourselves to the media more than we used to, because we were all at home with nothing else to do, um, which is never a good idea, because the media think I've come out with some bullshit. At least in the UK, anyway. Um, so you know that's that's caused a lot of fracturous uh, problems, I think, in the outside world. Like I say, for me personally, actually, if if I didn't expose myself to the media, if I never watched the news or anything, I wouldn't know any of this stuff was going on. I'd be happily toddling along. I think that's the same with most of us. And the media just sort of exaggerates things and, and makes things a bigger deal than they are, really. And it's funny because I consider myself a big fan of visual media, you know, I love movies and TV shows, but I actually haven't watched um, kind of main U UK TV, uh, broadcast TV, for, since like 2012 when my old TV blew up and I just got rid of it and I thought, I don't miss it, so I, you know, I, I haven't paid the TV licence or anything, don't watch it. Uh, but every now and then I catch a bit of it when I'm around with friends or my parents or whatever, and my God, UK TV is just awful. It's just utter rubbish. Uh, and I think more and more people are cottoning on to that. You think with a lockdown, uh, more people would be relying on mainstream uh, kind of terrestrial TV in the UK, but actually the BBC and the licence fee in general have had sort of mass cancellations because I think more and more people have actually sat at home and watched it properly and, and realised this is a load of bollocks, a load of crap. Uh, my parents watched this thing called uh, Not Going Out. I think that's what it's called. It's a comedy show. Well, it's supposedly a comedy show. Uh, and it's like watching an episode of Emmerdale, but with a laugh track put on. It's really odd, actually, because um, it's just not funny. There's, there's nothing particularly funny happens. Maybe something ever so slightly a bit silly or goofy, and then they just constantly have a laugh track on. And even my parents who watch it, they don't laugh. They just they sit there watching it, but I've never heard them laugh while watching it. It's a really odd program. Uh, and you look at, you know, I think it's maybe the same in America with movies. I mean, when was, when was the last decent uh, comedy TV show or movie? Not for pr probably about 10 years. I'd say The Inbetweeners was the last decent UK comedy. And that finished in 2010, the last season of that. Uh, you know, they've just neutered themselves so much now through fear of offending anyone. Uh, it's, it's, it's just drivel now on UK TV. And, you know, back in the noughties, I had Sky TV as well as Terrestrial TV. I loved it. But looking back, even then, it was mostly repeats. Like, Sky TV opened up a whole world of old TV shows and movies that I'd never heard of or seen before. And so for a good five years or so, I was just consuming so much. And, I, you know, some of my favourite movies and TV shows are now ones that I saw on there that I'd never heard of before. That I've, you know, now bought on physical media, so I don't need Sky. Um, but after a while, once I'd got through all the older shows they had, the newer stuff was just crap. Um, you know, uh, there's a thing in the UK called Gogglebox. I don't know if any other countries have this. And it's basically a TV show where they put cameras into some people's homes and watch them watching TV. And that's the programme. And that's been going for the best part of 10 years now. People love it. I had an ex-girlfriend who really liked it. And I, I gave it a try, I sat there, I don't think I even made it to 10 minutes in, like five minutes in, I was like, I can't, I can't watch this. So I just went and amused myself on the laptop. Uh, but it's, it's just, once again, it's not, like these people don't have insight into what they're watching. They don't have anything particularly intelligent to say. They're just kind of talking nonsense. And that's, that's the sort of thing that's all right in the break room at work or whatever, when you're just talking to your friends, like, oh, did you see EastEnders last night or something? But as entertainment that's being aired to the nation, that's piss poor. Like, what are you doing? I know watching TV is a passive thing to do, but to watch other people watch TV, I, I, it's just going too far for me. I, I don't get it. I just don't get it. It always kind of amazed me that there weren't mass TV license cancellations back in 2013 when uh, the whole Jimmy Savile thing came out, and it was pretty much 
confirmed that the BBC knew what was going on. And I, I can't believe that people carried on paying after that. Um, it, you know, it really took for the BBC to stop producing actual quality content for people to, to then say, oh, actually, no, we don't want to pay for this. Um, you know, morality be damned, I guess. Uh, but yeah, now they've kind of neutered themselves. Um, just, yeah, UK media is just awful. I either watch YouTube or um, uh, stuff I own on physical media, which I think is important to own physical media because I've noticed more and more things now are being censored and edited that do get aired on streaming services and that. So uh, personally, I always, if I'm a big enough fan of something, I'll get it on DVD, which is a shame that they're kind of dying out now, which is worrying. But you know, I, I don't want what I'm a fan of to be edited or censored. For illumination, I've bought this LE camping lantern. I've used this before. I've used most of this stuff before, so I'm sure some of you have probably seen this. Um, might be a bit bored of me showing it, but for any new viewers, um, it's a really nice lantern. Uh, it's got two light settings for the lantern itself. Press it once to get two of the sides on, and then again to get all four side, uh, sides on. But also, the two sides here will detach and they become separate little torches slash flashlights that you can either use for the lights out the front or if you press them a second time they have lights on the side so you can stand them up and basically you can have all three of these set up around your camp to give you some really decent illumination. Now you can either charge it with a USB port or you can put batteries in if you want into the bottom it takes a load of those really big batteries i can't remember what they're called it's like, it's like three of those those big batteries that you never have basically uh, but i've never had to use that it's always charged up nicely and held a good charge through just charging through the uh, usb port these ones do take separate batteries though um, they take a couple of little triple a batteries three triple a batteries I've got my toiletries kit here, which is just a microfiber towel. Uh, I splash myself over with some water. I've also got some antibacterial wipes with me that I wipe myself over and then use the microfiber towel um, just to dry myself off. But also in here, I've got a little toothbrush and a tub of toothpaste there. And it's like I was saying earlier about free samples. Uh, you can get these tubes of toothpaste in the dentists. They often have them on the counter. Or if you go to the websites of these um, toothpaste companies, they'll often give away free samples now and then that you can, you know, you just have to, I don't know, sign up to the mailing list or whatever, and then they uh, send you them. And they're quite handy for taking out camping. And then the portable toothbrush that you pull out of the handle there. And then flip it over, plug it back in and you have your little toothbrush. And you can get tiny tubes of toothpaste that will fit in that gap there between the brush and the handle when it's um, sort of folded into the handle. Um, but I find these little sample packs just as good. Not a bad night's sleep, it's about uh, 10 in the morning now. So, yeah, 10 o'clock. So, I suppose I should get up. It's quite a nice day outside again. This is a really nice canteen I got a few months ago, two litres. The pouch and strap make it so it's really comfortable to carry. So I use this all the time when I'm out and about now. It's also a little compartment there for matches or whatever if you need, but because uh, I drink quite a bit of water, having two litres there is really handy for me.
just going to gather up some nettle leaves now to make some tea to go with my breakfast. A spider has built a cobweb in my cooking pot. Not a good idea. The uh, vegetarian all day breakfast now, because I'm quite hungry. It's a bit chilly as well, so after I've had this I might do a bit of exercise just to try and warm myself up. Now for me when I cook these I try and squeeze everything down to the bottom of the pack so that all the food itself is actually going to be submerged in the water as it boils up and heats it up. Squeeze it all down there and then just pop it in there. Top that up with a bit more water. This is beans, meat-free sausages and potatoes in a tomato sauce. So that sounds alright. Put the spork in there just to kind of clean and sterilise that a little bit. Because I used it a few times last night and it's just been sitting around overnight. So if you put that in the water as it's boiling, that just helps to kind of clean that up as well. With the whole limbo thing I was talking about last night, this year, also um, I got really into my health and fitness again at the start of the year. I got a load of gym equipment from home, finally. More weights, which are like gold dust in the UK. And I was getting on really well, but then I got tennis elbow in my left arm. So that kind of set me back for a couple of months. I had to pretty much give it up because uh, I had tennis elbow before a couple of years ago in my right arm. And uh, I thought to myself then, I'm not going to let it stop me. I'm going to work through the pain. <laughs> Bad idea. If you ever get tennis elbow, uh, that screwed me up for months because I pushed it too hard and really injured my elbow. So as soon as I got that twinge this year in my left elbow, I uh, straight away just forced myself to have a couple of months off to rest it, and now it's pretty much fine. Still get a little twinge here and there, but nothing like it was in 2019 when I got it on my right arm and, and just pushed it too hard. But that was once again another feeling of being in limbo. It's like I've just started getting back into things and then I'm set back again. Just like the weather, just like with the lockdowns and things like that. It gets a bit tiresome. I tried the uh, sesame seed bar from the ration pack during the night just as a snack if I woke up hungry and uh, that wasn't so nice. It is pretty much just taste of seed, there isn't much taste to it and it's rock hard. I thought it was going to crack my teeth on it. Uh, but in general those ration packs are pretty good. I've had a few from this website before. I can't remember what it's called now but I'll leave a link in the description. They, um, they stock uh, ration packs from all sorts of different countries so you've got quite a variety of different types of ration packs as well as obviously you know, uh, different food types and things that are in each one. So I find them pretty good. They haven't been on there for about a year, so um, if they're even still in business. <laughs> right, I'm gonna do a bit of exercise now, just to wake me up a bit and warm me up a bit. And this is something that I've been doing at home recently as well, which is a bit of a fat burning exercise, so I wanna try and lose a stone. So start off with squats, just do 20 squats. Normally at home, I would be holding a, 10, a sort of 15 or 20 kilo weight, but all I've got here is my two liter bottle of water. So I'm just gonna hold that. Just adds a bit of extra weight and do 10 of these actually. Um, and then as time goes by, you can build up, you know, as you get used to doing it, you get stronger and build it up to 15 or 20 in a go. And then once you've done the 10 squats, I've completely lost count because I'm talking to you guys, go straight down into some push-ups. And you want to do 20 of these to start off with, like I say, as time goes by, you can build up. And then go straight from that to plank and do that for 20 seconds. <coughs> This is good for just burning off some calories, keep yourself a bit active. It doesn't take too long to do this. And it does help to kind of build your heart and lungs up a bit. And then once you've done the plank for 20 seconds, have a bit of a rest 
for 30 seconds or a minute and then start over again. Do squats again, press ups, plank, another rest for 30 seconds or a minute and basically do it five times over and uh, you'll find by the end of the fifth one you'll be feel quite worn out and uh, you'll have you know, had a, you know, quite a decent little workout for the sake of, you know, probably doesn't even take 10 minutes to do it out of your day. So um, if you're feeling like you need to just do a little bit of exercise just to get yourself active, on something quick to do while you're watching TV or whatever, uh, I find this quite a good little circuit. And it's quite nice when I'm out camping to just do a little bit of an exercise. It makes it feel more like home, uh, you know, to just do add little things like that to your trip. And I'm just using my sleeping mat as an exercise mat, basically. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's a nice exercise to do. Um, even in winter, you know, sometimes if you're sitting there in winter and it feels really cold and that, uh, doing an exercise like that will really warm you up. Uh, you'd be surprised without having to turn the heating up or put loads of layers of jumpers on. If you just do a, an exercise like that for the sake of 10 minutes, that will really warm you up nicely. This is a great pack. I can really load it up. And if I want to, I can even attach uh, more pouches like the pouch I keep my Yugoslavian mess kit in. That will just strap over there and add on to the outside of the pack. You've got these two large pockets on either side, which will actually unzip and detach. So if you wanted a lighter load, if you didn't need all the extra pouches, you can take these two off of either side and you can even use them independently. If you didn't need the big pack, if you just needed a little pouch, you can uh, attach that to a strap and put it on your belt or whatever. And you've got another pouch at the front there. And on the top here, there's a pocket on the outside that will unzip to put things in. On the inside of the top, there's another zipper. So you've got an extra pouch there, as well as the main bulk of the bag. And these side pouches are really big. I mean, you can keep a week's worth of food, probably, if you really packed it in. If you had the, uh, you know, MREs or ration packs or whatever, you'd probably get, you know, maybe five days worth of food just in the side pack there, if you really packed it in. Uh, and it's nice that you've got the different pouches and things and like I say you can add a few on as well to uh, keep your kit organized. Now just a quick look at my webbing setup which I like to have so that if I want to wander away from camp I've still got a few essentials with me. I've got my main blade which is in Muella which is the first knife I ever got actually back when I was 18 from an army surplus store that used to be near me that closed down years ago. Uh, then I've got a bottle of water and I got that at the same time as the knife actually. Then I've got a secondary blade on a multi-tool along with a saw. This is a really nice knife actually. The saw comes in very handy. Then I've got a pouch here which has got a whistle, matches, a lighter, antibacterial wipes, just simple things like that. And then lastly on the back I've got that little Poundland trowel and a pouch there. And I can also attach my Yugoslavian mess kit to this. I'll either put it at the top of the yoke there or put it on my belt. So just uh, nice to have those things at hand. And I use a, a yoke with braces like this because when you've got a bottle of water, especially, I find it really pulls the belt down. So any kind of weight with a decent pack on your belt, I need braces on a yoke like that. The memory card's almost full, so I'm gonna have to say a quick goodbye. So before I disappear into the jungle with my camouflage, uh, I'll just say thanks for watching and uh, hopefully I'll see you again soon.